Uh, I think I've used it once because I had to reconstruct something, but I'm, I'm not sure. So next up is only faces, and right now, if I just press only faces, it does the same thing as delete faces. So if I select, uh, say, all the cube, the entire cube, you have all these faces, all edges selected, and press X, edges and face, oops, sorry, only faces, you're left with both the vertices and the edges, but no, no actual face. It's a bit like working in wireframe mode, but uh, less workable. So if we undo all this, uh, the last option is edge loop, but I said I would talk about that later. All is pretty ex self explanatory. You don't even actually need to have anything selected, it just deletes everything in the, in the object. So, you know, that's all. Now, create faces also goes with delete. Say you delete this face, and maybe this face, and maybe the one on the bottom. So now you're missing three faces here, and say you want to fill them in. Well, that's easy. Select all these vertices, and press F to automatically create a face between the selected vertices. You can do this on four sides. And, okay, it didn't change much visually here, but if you go, if you rotate around, it's filled. But let's delete this face again. Uh, and maybe this one. And right now, I've only been creating four-sided faces, or quads. You can also create triangles if you select three vertices. So, press F, create a triangle. Another triangle there. Another triangle. And another. But in this case, triangles aren't really very good because it's just not very practical to have triangles because they're much less easily workable than quads. Let's just fill these in. But before I fill them in, press Alternate F. Uh, actually, not Control F. Sorry. So this brings up the Faces menu. Now, in the Faces menu, you have Flip Normals, which I talked about earlier. The normals. Instead of having all the faces facing outward, you have them facing in inward. Make edge face, which we used. Fill, I don't ac exactly know what that does, because it, it's just not working. It's not doing anything. So I really wonder what this is actually supposed to do. Oh my god. Okay, so it just filled in this face whatever way it wanted. Okay, that is weird. But, as I said, I've never really used fill. Uh, in the face menu, you also have beauty fill, which I don't really know what it's for. Uh, solidify. But, uh, this is actually similar to extrude in this case. But, uh, there's actually a solidify modifier now. So, you don't really need that, I think. Uh, control F, sword faces, which I have absolutely no idea what they are, what that is. Quads to triangles is pretty useful. If you go in here, fill in these faces with F, and select all your, the, the entire cube. Control F, quads to triangles, which is also control T. It turns all your quadrilaterals, or four-sided faces, into triangles. So, basically that's what we did earlier, but by hand. You can also do that. Uh, uh, control F tries to, to, qu to quads, which creates quadrilaterals from triangles. But uh, triangles aren't really good to work with unless you're working in the game engine. Uh, some of these I don't exactly know what they're supposed to do. Uh, shade smooth and shade flat are actually accessible through this panel here, which is a T panel. If you scroll down, right here, shade smooth, shade flat. Uh, and all these other ones like rotate edge. Now rotate edge is a bit weird. Say you have a um well let's actually let's make this right actually the entire thing triangles so control T and just select this edge here. If you press control F and rotate rotate edge it just flips it around. So yeah okay. It's kinda weird but uh 
I'm guessing it has some uses. I think Jonathan Williamson had a video where he talked about uh, reworking topology and he used the rotate edge feature. But uh, I don't use it really. So yeah, I better get a move on because I'm actually talking about stuff that I hardly ever use. Yeah. So I'm on to loop cut. So let's cut this off and switch to loop cut. So now we're on to loop cut. Now, loop cut is a very, very useful tool. I use it very often, especially when working with a subsurf modifier. Now, let me demonstrate that really quickly. Now, you have this cube. So go into your modifiers panel, add modifier, subdivision surface. Now, turn it up to two and turn on optimal display. So immediately you'll notice that this cube is now turned into a sphere on the inside, but it's still a cube. If you go into edit object mode, it's sphere, but it, in edit mode, it's still a cube. But uh, say you want to sharpen this up without actually re uh, resorting to the crease value. Now, you can do this using loop cuts. Let's add one right down here, or actually right along the middle here. So press Control R, which will activate loop cut, and now you get this pink line right along the middle here if you hover your mouse over the middle of the edge. And let's just left click, and you can see that we now have another string of vertices following our mouse. So let's move it all the way over here, like over here. You can add in another one using Control R, add it in all the way over there, and just add in these, and it really just sharpens up the entire thing. So that's one very useful feature of loop cut, and it's the one I use most often. So you can pretty much add loop cuts anywhere you want. And now it looks smoother, but it's still a cube. So let's delete this subsurf modifier and just start over. So loop cut, as you see, basically adds a ring, a string of vertices, or an edge ring, in a ring of faces. So let's explore that a bit. Let's move this face over one uh, blender unit. So go into top mode, and say you want to have lines or strings of vertices lined up with these um, grid units. So press Control R, you'll get one right along the x-axis here, then right click to keep it centered along the ring of faces, and you can do this again on the side, and since our unit, our cube is two units high, just left click and right click and it'll get one unit uh, above this face. But now we have the problem of these two. Now you could just press Control R and try to line it up manually or bring it all the way over then bring it back one degree, one unit, then press Control R and then add in this one, then right click to center it. But that's just a bit too complicated for, for no reason. So there is a way to add in multiple loop cuts in one shot. Press Control R then scroll your mouse wheel up and you can change the number of cuts you're adding in. So I just want two for now, so scroll it up once, then left click, and you get these two loop cuts right where they're supposed to be. So that's loop cut. It's a very, very useful tool, uh, one that I use very, very often, and it's very important when using a subsurf modifier. Instead of using creasing, you can use loop cuts and it really makes the mesh much nicer. Uh, but there's also another thing that I want to talk about, something that I mentioned earlier in the delete section. Uh, if you select, if you want to delete, uh, well first off, press X and you get the menu here and the last one is edge loop. Now edge loops are created by loop cut. Like these vertices here, these eight vertices are an edge loop. And you can also select edge loops by using a very cool shortcut which is alternate right click. So if you alternate right click on these edges, you can basically select any edge loop you want. So let's select this one, press X and delete edge loop. And it deletes the edge loop but retains all the faces. So that is a very, very useful feature because otherwise you would pretty much have to delete the actual vertices, then fill these in by hand, 